What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers and with another Spotlight video. I don't do these very often because I don't like just sort of picking a random mod off the workshop or a random ship off the workshop and going, alright, I'm going to spotlight that. But I do quite like getting a chance to show off some of your guys' creations, especially when it's something really cool and something that I know has been a lot of work. So what we have for you today is something from Seoxynic, who will be familiar to the longer term viewers of the channel as someone who's done, to be honest, a huge amount over the, the course of the channel's life. He made my, my logo, he did the Drone Wars on the Steam group, and he's also responsible for the script behind the pinball system that we did last week, I think it was. So he's been really, really helpful, great guy, talked to him a load, and I've been following along as he's been making what we have here. And I believe he's calling it the Avalon, and on the outside at least, it looks reasonably simple. But I can promise you, it is nothing like as simple as it might appear, and a very, very cool design. So let me give you as quick a tour as I can, because the other thing we're going to do at the end of this episode is bring Seoxonic in so we can explain a little bit about the core functionality of this. Now, the first thing we're going to do is open this main hangar door, which has to be done through an antenna, because this whole ship's really designed to be controlled from inside. And this is the first feature I quite like. I like this sort of double bulkhead door plus the actual airtight door deeper inside. And you saw that all de depressurized there. This is, of course, an entirely oxygenated vessel. So come in here, and this is the main hangar bay with some various little hangars dotted around the side. And what I'm going to do is open one of those using the antenna again. And what you would normally do, of course, is close the big hangar door behind you. But I'm intentionally not going to do that. So we're going to open that up, depressurize it, let a load of air out into space. What a waste. And we're going to go in here, and this is one of the hangars. Obviously, they're very similar. These sensors on the ceiling, by the way, they're kind of important. So I'll be back to those later. But other than that, we've got air vent, a couple of connectors, and the door to get out. So let's go and have a look around the rest of the ship. Except we can't. It's not... You can hear, probably hear me spamming the T key there. Uh, we can't actually get out of the ship at the moment, and that is because these doors are open and it's all depressurized. So let's go into the menu and just pressurize things back up again. Now what I am going to do with this episode, because this is quite a complex laid out ship and also I don't want it to be too long, I'm going to kind of cut between the rooms rather than show you the whole layout. It's a, it's a very cool laid out ship, I promise you, so I suggest you go and have a look at that side of things as well. But the real deal is what we're going to look at at the end. And you can see that now that door's closed, we're allowed to get through this one. So this is a built-in safety mechanism. And here we are in sort of the corridor that skirts the outside of the ship. That's the front, this is the back, and this is where we're headed first. So the first thing we come across in the ship, the first room we come towards the rear end of the ship, is this, which is sort of a construction, refinery, oxygen production room. And I quite like the aesthetic in here. I like how he's using these uh, conveyor tubes to look like something different, just to make the aesthetic look a bit, a little bit more interesting. Uh, and he's quite clearly better at picking colours than I am as well. <laughs> we come through, and this is the cargo bay. So the, the big, make, big hangar that was at the back of the main hangar bay with a few cargo modules in here and I, again I quite like those with the connectors and the mass on them. And what we're going to do now is head more rearwards towards the back of the ship. So here we are coming into the rearmost room on the entire ship and this is the engine room essentially. So we've got these reactors, we've got our gyros up here as well and then the main engines on the back of the ship. And again I quite like how he's kind of tried to make things look like they're flowing a bit, like they're not individual objects just placed around but part of an overall design. So that's kind of the rear end of the ship which is a little bit more basic. Let's head back towards the front now. So as you head forwards on the ship, so as you head forwards on the ship, the first thing you find is this corridor here, this staircase, which leads up to one of a few uh, crew quarters, which are pretty cool. And the thing I like about these crew quarters is actually just how he's managed to fit quite a few of these really quite big crew quarters in here. He's, the use of space is really impressive. You know, nothing's wasted in this ship. Everything's tucked nicely away. You've got to remember, this is all conveyed up as well. And you can't really, other than where he wanted you to, like there quite clearly, see any of those. So now we're at the very front of the ship, we've passed a few crew quarters, and we're at the very sort of last couple of rooms before the bridge. So let's have a look in here, and this is kind of the server room, if you want to call it as such. And it's in two parts, so this area looked cool, but not as cool as the bit back here. And I like the fact that he's, this is actually a lot of the stuff that's making some of the stuff on the ship work. So I really like how he's integrated it into sort of the actual aesthetic of the design too. Use these timers as a feature. I think there might be a few too many programming blocks in here, but... It still looks good. 
And now we're coming up to the bridge. So last door before we get the staircase to the bridge, and through here is the only turret aboard the vessel, just defending the access. They come up this staircase into what is, without a shadow of a doubt, my favourite room aboard. And this is the bridge, and it contains the one mod that he's used, so a lot of people will recognise these panels here. They are very cool. I wish I didn't have this rule about not using mods, and then I would be using those all over the place. But hey, and this room, I think, looks pretty amazing. I love the view with through the glass. I love the layout of the consoles in here. I just generally like how it looks. And oh, I wasn't looking that way, was I? This is the real deal, and this is the bit that I'm actually going to invite Sioxenic along to try and help me explain a little bit, because this is pretty complex and damn cool. Especially, I'm sure you guys have noticed that he's managed to put my spinning logo on there, just because he's a legend. So, here we have Sioxenic. Say hey, man. Hi. Cool. So, yeah, let's uh, do a quick walkthrough of what is, without a shadow of a doubt, the coolest part of this ship, which is this menu system here. So, as you can see, we actually have th four buttons that are going to give us up, down, and then OK and back control over this menu. And the menu's got a bunch of functions in it, so let's go sort of kind of through them one by one. Uh, so, starting off with the room control, as you can see, we've got a full list of every single room that's actually on the ship, and some of the corridors as well. So, we're just going to go through, pick one at random. Uh, let's not do the bridge, because we're in that. <laughs> let's go with this uh, reactor at the back. So that was the room right at the back, and you can see we've got a few options, and not just that, we've also got a little bit of information down the bottom that sometimes gets hidden by the control panel. But, yeah, some of those are a bit obvious, and some of those are a bit less obvious. So, room lockdown, Sioxonic? What are we What are we talking about there? It basically turns off, and it closes all the doors and then turns them off, so you can't go through. It basically just locks the room down. Okay, so I guess that could be used when you've got a breach, or vice versa, when you want to keep someone in a location you don't want him to get away. In fact, you, yeah, basically. That's pretty vicious. You could lock someone down and then, as you can see, we've got a depressurize option. So we could lock someone in a room and then depressurize that room to kill them. Hmm. I don't think that was why, why it was built or what it was intended for, but <laughs> a possible one. And then, as you can see, if we also hit depressurize on here, we've got an atmosphere reading at the bottom. So that's going to slowly drop as that room gets depressurized by the air vent in there. That's cool on its own, but not quite as cool as the bit that it's connected to. So... On the left here, we have a big old screen, and it's representing the ship. Now, I have no idea how this is made. I'm going to get Seoxonic to give you a brief rundown, but you can see on the, the back end of the ship here, we've now got that room that we've just depressurized, marked with these P's. basically means that that's a pressurized environment, but there's no oxygen there. And this works for pretty much the whole ship. So, I don't know if you could briefly, in, in non-technical speak so I understand it, explain a little bit about how this works, because this is very, very cool. Basically, it's using an ASCII image of the whole ship. Basically, an image that's just made out of text. Um, I basically just replace the different parts of the ship with specific letters. Like, for example, the main hangar is A. And I didn't replace that letter with whatever symbol I'm using to show the status. Okay, so you basically got a letter for each room, and then... As statuses in that room change, you can go, well, vent B has shows that that room's depressurized, so we can update room B on the LCD. Exactly. Ah, oh, simple and kind of clever at the same time. And I like the fact that you've managed to get it looking spot on like a layout of this ship as well. You know, knowing, knowing this perhaps a bit better than the viewers, this is a very good representation of what this ship looks like. It's basically been made through very meticulously taking some screenshots of the ship and sitting with paint and make sure that it's the smallest version of the ship I could possibly get and then converting that into letters. <laughs> oh, very cool. And I know you had a bit of frustration with the, the lack of monospaced font for this, so perhaps if Keen happened to be listening or watching, please guys, let's give us a monospaced font. I know he spent quite a long time. In fact, I'll let him say this because it's his story. <laughs> I have spent at least five to six hours just figuring out which letters to use, which one looks good enough, testing and making sure that all the fonts have the, you know, all the symbols chosen have the exact same width. It's not easy, let me tell you that much. Yeah, so just to explain that one guys, it basically, with a lack of a monospace font, if you were to change that P there to a Q, it would actually get wider. And so the square that represents that room would no longer be a square. It would have funny jagged edges to it and so on. As you change the different letters, it would all shift around and change size. Uh, so 
that's a, a very very cool system and uh, I think at the end we'll do a little demonstration with how cool that is in sort of first person but yeah so that that's kind of the room control and is there is there anything in the room control we've missed so let's just jump into the bridge maybe and yeah, it looks like, as you can see, the atmosphere level in the bridge is actually slightly down from 100%, and that is because the Oxenic here is standing with his helmet off, so we're actually using a little bit of that oxygen. Uh, there is also the turn-off ventilator. That's basically if you're in a situation where you might be running out of oxygen, or ice for that matter, you can start um, conserving your oxygen levels by only having oxygen in the rooms you need them. Well, that's very cool, and so you could also combine that, I guess, with the room lockdown functionality to mean that you could essentially depressurize a room intentionally and then not allow people in it so that they don't go in and get themselves a nasty surprise or depressurize other areas of the ship yes very cool okay let's go back and have a look at the hangar control which i believe is pretty similar to the one that we've just been looking at in that it controls sort of relatively similar things but i think there are a few extra options in here yeah, now that you're looking at the hangar control, there is both internal doors and the hangar doors. So, the internal doors are obviously the doors that um, internally lead into the ship. The hangar doors themselves, you can open or you can override them, which basically does the same thing. But the open hangar doors option will um, change to caution human if anybody is present in the hangar at that point. Very cool, and that ties into this LCD up the top here, and this was what I mentioned earlier about the sensors in the roof of the hangars. They're basically set up so that they will both detect ships and personnel in there, and the system will respond slightly differently, as just mentioned there, when there's a personnel detected in a room. So it won't allow you, for example, to open the hangar doors if the outside area is depressurized. So kind of and because of the way I've scripted it, it won't actually allow you to close them either. So you, yeah, basically you need to get that guy out of there before it'll allow you to change the state of that room. Well, that's pretty cool. It's, Sorry. Go yeah, ahead. it's it has not been secured though, so if you have an open hangar from hangar 1 into the main hangar, the main hangar doesn't have this limitation. But that's basically because I was a little bit lazy while scripting it. Um, if you try to like take a look at the code script, um, it looks horrible. <laughs> Okay, honest, honest. So this, what I've done there literally is I've opened the main hangar. So we should, in fact, if I take a few steps back, maybe turn my jetpack on, we should actually be able to see this thing opening up, hopefully. Uh, no, you didn't. Because no, I didn't. Because if, if you take a look while you're opening hangar doors, it'll actually start saying operating. Oops, okay, so I, I failed at hitting OK. <laughs> there you go. So fortunately, we've got Seoxidic around to tell me what, what I'm doing wrong. But there, so all of this is literally controlling things, and as we've opened that, you'll see that we've now got the LCD updated to tell us that the main hangar, which you'll remember from how we entered, is now not only depressurized, but has no oxygen either. And we could continue opening and closing doors and making bits of the ship update, but let's jump back, and also at the bottom there you can see current atmosphere level not pressurized. So let's go back and look at the final sort of functionality in here we will mention there's, there's there's i think he's got plans for some production functionality down the line uh, but at the moment that's not in there there was a few rooms you notice that aren't finished there was a few different places where stuff could be fit so i think that's a, a project for future but what we do have and the last one which again is pretty cool and is using the same mod that i was using way back the mod from mod by arnold but with a couple of customizations i believe is our autopilot setup so I'm just going to go in here and we have two options, enable and plan course. So I'll dive into the plan course and here you can see a bunch of waypoints, but not only that, one of the customizations that I know Seoxonic did for this. So what exactly have you, you changed with this script to make it integrate with your ship in particular? Basically it's going, like, firstly it's using this LCD panel here to save um, all of the GPS coordinates. So right. you can just enter any copy and paste uh, coordinate from your K menu. It also um, allows you to pick up the coordinates into your own K menu by just going into the LCD display. As well as I've um, slightly updated the status of the, the status system of the original NAV autopilot script. Now it's using an LCD panel and I've um, basically changed them a little bit so the text is a little bit more centered so it looks a little better in my opinion. 
Yeah, that's very cool because I know the when I was using this this system, which is still a very cool mod, it was using a beacon to relay various actions from the autopilot, and which is fine unless, of course, there's someone around that you don't want to know what it is you're doing. Uh, in which case, it's kind of broadcasting it to the world. So I think that that combined with yeah this this very cool ability to just stick stuff into an LCD is is an awesome addition to this mod, which was already very good to begin with. But I think there's there's one final thing in here, so I'll just demonstrate what this does. But you can actually go through these waypoints. Let's add add a few. Let's go down and have a look. We got let's go to Seoxanix hideout and and pirate base, of course, and then maybe Oh, there's no Fedora. Not 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 was not allowed. Oh well. Oh well, we'll have to leave the Fedora for another video. <laughs> oh there it is. Ah, a Fedora. Awesome. Let's visit the, the Fedora um, as well. The list auto updates in real time, so people can add GPS coordinates to the LCD while editing. Oh, that's very cool. So you literally just went and changed that there, and now it's all working. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> so now, we've, as you can see, we've actually queued up a series of different waypoints to visit, and now we've done that, we can just hit Activate Autopilot, and off we go, and you'll see that all of the sort of various commands are being relayed on the LCD rather than through the beacon. So yeah, all in all, some very, very awesome functionality. And as I mentioned earlier, one last thing I wanted to do just to demo the functionality of this screen in particular. I'm sorry, Seoxanic, but uh, our roof is gone all of a sudden. And as you can see, it did not take very long for that panel to go, oh god, the hangar is breached. The hangar is breached? This is not over the hangar. This is, <laughs> this is the, the bridge is breached. So yeah, thank you very much for coming along, Seoxanic, showing me around this part of the ship at least. The rest of it I kind of found my way around on my own. Uh, is there anything you'd like to add before we finish up? Yeah, I'm definitely interested in making a much better and more crash-proof version of the script as well as a more, bit more customizable, so you can add your own, add it to your own ship. But it'll require a little bit of interest from people because this have taken me several weeks and very meticulous research to create. So, so basically what I you're saying there is come and give you some love on the workshop for this ship let him know that you want him to make something let him know that you'd, you'd use this and this 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 menu system i think the menu system and the oxygen system are kind of independent things they don't have to necessarily go together is that right um as i'm going to develop two different scripts one that's basically going to be an integrated um ship system like this one uh, if at least it garners enough support uh, but no matter what i will make a menu system script that'll be able to trigger uh, through timers and other stuff, which will be very easily customizable. Well, that sounds absolutely awesome. So yeah, guys, if, if that sounds interesting to you, do go and hit this up on the workshop. Obviously, it's his workshop link that I've got down below the video. Go and click on that, have a play around with it. It's a really, really cool ship. So even if you're not interested in using this ship yourself as is, sounds like there might be some interesting stuff in the future from Seoxonic if you give him a bit of love, which is fair enough, I think. It's not nice doing this work with no support. I can tell you that from my own past. So thanks a lot again, guys. Dude, thanks a lot for coming along. And I think I will also sign off myself. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you did like this video, please hit like, please hit subscribe. Remember to go and check out the ship on the workshop and give Seoxonic some love as well. And otherwise, I will catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.